who are, I said, late stage doctoral researchers in our work, the power design and engineering. I like to call it a collective rather than a group, but as Christina introduces, we all work very closely together. Um, the theme really is uh, compression garments for sportswear. Our first speaker will be Zishan, and then followed by Casey. I'll allow them both to introduce themselves in more detail, um, and there will, of course, be time for questions after each. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation. First of all, thank you, everyone, for coming here today. I'm Zishan Azam. I'm doing uh, PhD, uh, and today I will be going to discuss more about scan to need sports compression garment engineering. Uh, I'm supervised by Dr. Christina, Dr. Simeon, and Dr. Nora. These are the content of my presentation. So I will start from the compression garment. So compression garment, uh, usually they are the elastic garment, stretchable. They have the negative ease, mean they are, uh, their dimension are less to our bodies. So when we wear them, we need to stretch them. When we stretch them, in fact, we are applying force. The same force is stored in them, same like a spring principle and the energy which uh, we apply to stretch them, same energy is applied by these garments on our body. So they have a graduated compression means if we talk about leg, they have high compression at the bottom, they will have, gonna have low compression at the top. So they also have applications in body shapings and in aerodynamics where the uh, in aerodynamic sports like cycling, skating and skying and specifically in skying where the uh, athlete speeds goes up to 100 miles an hour. <coughs> About compression, uh, well, uh, the, there are different categories uh, of the compression. So if the com uh, uh, compression applied by the compression garment is higher than 44, it will be always discomfortable for all the wearers, whether they are patient or whether they are from athletes. And for medical categories, the compression, uh, wearable compression is between 45 to 15. And for sports categories, uh, it is like below 15. Uh, for above 15, it should need to be prescribed by some physiotherapist and uh, then uh, it is usually wear. So how the compression garment wear? When we wear these garments, they in fact apply compression, they reduce our muscles, thus uh, increasing the blood flow. And uh, uh, most of the authors have uh, like uh, uh, agreed on it that they are, they are beneficial for the post-activity benefit like uh, post-exercise recovery of muscle and things like this. They can also help us to reduce the injuries in, in a way like we can control the stretch of the garment and it will not allow our muscle to go up, to, uh, up from a certain limit. And they also help us to support the vibrations, especially in the high speed sports. Uh, they just tight our muscle, there will be less vibration ultimately it can affect the, in the performance of the athletes. Well, uh, the major challenges to sports is uh, our body dimensions. It vary in a way like uh, in different people, uh, like if they wear a standard garment, there will be some issue which I will be addressing later on in this presentation. So uh, the, one of the challenge is like we do sizing of the compression garment on base of few dimension, which is currently practiced as well, for example, on the basis of waist, chest and things like this. So just to give you an idea, for example, these are uh, three athletes which I have mentioned, uh, I have shown you here. And these are the circumstances from ankle towards the thigh. And I have just shown you like these are their calf circumstances. So what will happen if we design a garment of whose calf should be here and if this point goes here. So normally calf point have higher circumference of the garment. If it goes here, it will apply less compression. Similarly, if it comes here, uh, it will again apply uh, less compression and this way thing will become worse. So three, uh, little bit introduction about 3D scanning. So what we do in 3D scanning, we just scan uh, an object and then we can analyze uh, in a way, in a more detailed way, we can measure uh, the distances between different points, whether it is a state distance or a surface distance, uh, if we need to analyze the shape, even we can do this. And these are all the things which we are doing currently in our uh, size team scanner we have and also the size team software we, which we are using. Uh, about the 3D body scanning, these are some of the measurement and uh, the garment are designed uh, based on these measurement and the relationship between these measurement need to be well established, especially for the compression garments. 
So we are also conducting one of the study in which uh, we are using uh, scan data of more than 2,000 people just to establish the relationship between different uh, uh, the, the, between the, uh, all of these measurements. So uh, now I'm going to our, uh, the sample which we produce. We use the mass uh, circular knitting machines. So we use two different types of yarns. One was main yarn, uh, it is uh, simple nylon yarn, and the other one is double covered yarn. So it has elastomeric inside, and then it is uh, covered by two uh, different uh, nylon fibers, which was like wrapped on it in uh, different direction. Then we produce some knitted structures, and uh, these are some of the garments which we produce. So uh, what we do in circular knitting, we produce a uh, state two state tubes, so we call them as semi seamless garment. Uh, so, semi seamless garment mean uh, they are seamless, but uh, at some point we need to sti may, uh, uh, like stitch them to make a complete garment. So, uh, from close point, what, what happened is this like we join two garments in the back panel. If we need to, depending upon the uh, body shape, if we need to add a separate panel, we can add a separate panel, but at the back. So I am just, I'm just going to show you, for example, uh, this is a semi-seamless garment who has no seams on the legs, but one seam at the front and uh, two seam at the back, uh, depending upon, for example, if we need to add a separate panel, back panel. And on the other hand, this is a garment who has no seam on the front and no seam on the back. Why, for example, there is uh, sometimes there is a seam and one uh, sometimes there is a no seam. So it depends upon the machine as well whether the machine is able to produce up to that much of circumference. So, for example, uh, the conventionally how we produce the garment when we need to have like uh, for a greater size, so we just increase the amount of fabric. It didn't work like this in the circular knitting because in circular knitting, whatever the machine dimension, whatever the machine needle is, it always remains the constant. So, we need to increase the loop size to like produce the same size even for the ankle and same size for the thigh from same machine, same number of needles and things. So, uh, moving toward the compression engineering, so how we can engineer then the compression, this, this initially I just told you about how we can produce the garment, now how we can engineer the compression. So, when a compression garment on circular knitting specifically, it is produced, so what happened, it has uh, like increasing dim uh, dimension. When the dimension is increased by changing the loop size or loop dimension, what will happen, it will, the loop will have ultimately different mechanical properties at all points. So, uh, different authors uh, in literature have modeled the mechanical properties uh, to predict the compression of the fabric, but they did it uh, on flat pad knitting machine where uh, the similar principle work for our cut and seam garments. So, to come over this problem, what I did, I did produce uh, some part of fabric on the same machine with the same knitting parameter who will have ultimately same dimension, same loop size at every part. And then we cut this part of the uh, fabric and then we test them mechanically. After testing them mechanically, we have the mechanical stress strain behavior of the fabric. Of course, uh, when we wear this garment, our garment will not be like deformed up to the breaking point. So uh, we have select a range based on the strain which uh, possibly will be applied to the fabric uh, during wearing. So then applying, uh, selecting a range of, uh, and it was different for all different points. And uh, then I model these equation by and obtain the curve fitting by third polynomial, and then we predict the pre compression. So uh, uh, the uh, experimental and predicted comp compression was not varying, for example, more than 0.5 millimeter of mercury. Oh, sorry. One one thing which I, I didn't mention. So initially, all of these garments were designed by uh, a male uh, male alba form, uh, which is like size 40 uh, according in accordance with the UK size. So, uh, when we predict the compression, so the, this, this graph shows you this is the dimension of the male alpha form 40 which is like shown in the red uh, curve and, the, and then I pick six different scans from CSAR data and then I have showed its dimension starting from the ankle toward the thigh. thigh. Uh, so, all of these scans and the male alpha form have same dimension at the ankle point but uh, I have just shown you how the body dimension and they have the same height. So I have just shown you how their dimension can vary uh, in regular way. So for example, the blue scan 6 have like higher calf circumference, 
but when it goes to thigh, it have like the circumference at the fourth number. On the on the same way, the scan three have the calf circumference which is at third number, but it has highest circumference at the thigh position. So how how it will affect the compression? So after. Uh, as we are like model our fabric, uh, like how the, our fabric will behave, uh, how our uh, like fabric will apply compression on different bodies. Using the same model, we apply on the different scan bodies by taking measurement from size stream. And uh, as I was, uh, tell, told you people that these garments should have graduated compression, meaning that they should have high compression at ankle. And when going moving forward, they should have lower compression to help to move the blood flow from uh, like bottom to upward. But when we wear the same garment which was designed for male alpha form 40 on uh, this course, uh, we if we wear the same garment on different people who I have shown, I have just modeled their compression result, how much compression will be applied on these bodies. So interestingly, the scan 6, for example, was found to have highest compression here but uh, or depending upon its body measurement and it was found to have like fourth number compression at first and it, it, these compression are not gradual so it means that if a compression which is designed for one body or to a person who have same dimension at one point it is quite possible that it uh, that, uh, instead of having uh, affecting uh, effectiveness of the garment it may have adverse effect on the garment in a way that it may block the compression at the calf or maybe at thigh point by applying more compression on this. That was all from my presentation. If you do have questions, if you just briefly introduce yourself so we know what your sort of perspective is, that would be very helpful. I'll ask you a quick question then, Zishan. Um, you talked about altering the compression of different parts of the leg based on your measurements. Those are quite discrete measurement points. So obviously there's quite a few more sort of contours and shapes between those measurement points. Um, I see from your picture we've got some uh, pressure tester, force tester. Are you just measuring at the discrete measurement points? You've got the yeah, scan between. Uh, at the moment, I'm just measuring uh, at the specific point because if the compression is increasing and uh, if it is decreasing, I just suppose that it will be increasing uniformly or it will be decreasing. Um, so you're using the body scan data to um, predict the, the pressure measurement. Um, are you then maybe going to look at actually um, like doing this on a person and measuring the pressure on a person to see if the pressure on that person versus the scan is comparable? Or? So at the moment, the male alpha farm on which we measured the compression, it was like hard body. Mm -hmm. So of course, uh, definitely if we measure it on a real person and uh, specifically if uh, then it also depends on which side if we are measuring on car specifically on back side then it has soft issues and it will get compressed so there are chances that it will show the actual reading will be much less uh, than the actual one